Moana. Lady. <laughs> That's the only stick. So, wait, what's the other stick? No, Mr. Roboto. Okay. You just ignored Moana. I love that he went straight from like he did he went straight from music videos to Bad Boys, The Rock. Because Armageddon Bad Boys was Pearl just Harbor. a two hour rock video. Bad Boys Two, The Island. That's Wait, the is that Island. the one with um what's his yeah, name? Was... Uh Ewan McGregor. Ewan McGregor. Ewan, Ewan McGregor. Ewan. I actually that's another good one. Yeah, at some point he just that whole Transformers thing, it just kinda he gave him lots of money. He said, "Whatever, I'll do it." What's sad is Hasbro, Hasbro is trying to trying to is trying to make another universe out of the rest of the toy disparate toy properties sad? they have. Huh? Why is that sad? Because they're like the first Marvel, not Marvel, the first Hasbro. Like, think of all the uh, all the toy properties that became movies. Um, yeah. like actual like battleship. Right. Uh-huh. Um, I liked Battleship. That was that was a just an awesomely bad movie, and I've watched it three <laughs> times. I'll um, have you know. <laughs> there's GI Joe, and they did that one twice, and it still sucked. I Transformers. The first those. one was the only. So, wait, you you're say. telling me it's sad that they're trying to make something because other things have been bad in the past. Well, it's just they 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 want to make a movie that sells. Toys. No one should ever I can't try. Believe you don't like metal. You're right, Tom. No one should ever try. Okay, as long as we're clear on that. <laughs> that is my advice to you, kids. Just avoid Lay down a and lifetime die of while you're heartache young. and just disappointment. Oh, Roger. <laughs> Stay in your bed. Just weep under under your covers. Mr. Birth School Work Death himself, Roger Chang. Ladies Don't and even gentlemen. weep. Get <laughs> it brings you nothing. Get drunk, go to sleep. Get up, go to work. Yeah. It's an old song. An old and yet guy. still relevant. <laughs> even today. <laughs> uh, you know what else is relevant? Doing this show. Okay. I'm going to ask you, Sarah Lane, to do something for me today, and I bet you can guess what it is. <coughs> Don't have the slightest inkling. Oh, uh, would you read line three? Is what I was <laughs> Happy to. Get it. Get all the. Get it out of your system. <laughs> uh, all right. I am going to count you in in like twenty seconds. How's that? Ah, sounds good. Sounds good. TGIF, man. Yeah, for men, sure. And, and women. <laughs> All of y'all. <laughs> All y'all. All right. Ready? Five, four, three, two, one. Thanks to everybody who supports independent tech news directly. If you're not already, become a DTNS member at patreon.com slash DTNS. <laughs> This is the Daily Tech News for Friday, November 30th, 2018. In Los Angeles, I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Feline, I'm Sarah Lane. And from a bright and sunny L.A. County, West Side. <laughs> east Side, East Side, a Toronto yeah. Shank Show. Alameda, California. Uh, and also joining us today, very happy to have Patrick Norton back on the show from avxl.com and techthing.com, as well as other things. Uh, Patrick, how's it going? I'm good. I was all ready to leap in there, unlike the opening for the patrons earlier when I was terribly confused. Mm. Hi, everyone. Hi. Uh, <laughs> you're going to talk to us about cool audio things people might want to get either for themselves or others this holiday season. Absolutely. All right. Well, let's, uh, we'll get to that in a few. Let's start with a few tech things we should know. Pro boxer Floyd Mayweather and music producer DJ Khaled have settled with the SEC for what the commission determined was promoting initial coin offerings, or ICOs, without disclosing that they were getting paid promotional fees to do so. Both settled the charges without admitting or denying the findings. Mayweather will pay $300,000 in disengorgement, a $300,000 penalty, and $14,775 in interest. Khaled will pay a fraction of that, but same idea. Idea. Mayweather agreed not to promote securities for three years and call it agreed to a two year ban. My holiday gift to Sarah to, to let her have that. Thanks, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> it means a lot. 
<laughs> Crazy story. Uh, Apple has approved India telecom regulator Trey's Do Not Disturb app, and it is available in the App Store. The app helps combat unwanted calls and messages using a Do Not Disturb registry, which users can report unwanted numbers to. Apple previously resisted approving the app over privacy concerns related to sharing contacts with the government. Apparently, they figured that out. They were working with TRAI about that. So uh, the iPhones won't be banned. Trey said that the iPhones would be banned for sale in India if the app was not approved by January. So it's all good. <laughs> iPhones are going to stick around in India and you get your Do Not Disturb app and everybody's happy. Uh, let's talk a little more about the the piece in our time between Amazon and Apple here. Yeah, some good news if you if you use both of the services regularly. Amazon announced that its Echo speakers will start supporting Apple Music on December 17th through an Apple Music skill. Users can enable and link to their Apple Music account that way. Amazon says that users will be able to play songs uh, or by artists or by album and Apple's curated playlists, radio stations. The Apple Music integration is for Echo speakers though. So if you're like me and you have a third party smart speaker, that taps into Amazon's assistant, for example, a Sonos One, it's not happening on December 17th, that much we know. It's just for Echoes, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's not all of Amazon voice services. It's a skill yeah. in, the, in, in the database, but I guess it only works on Echoes, so that must be a deal with Apple. The other thing I noted in Amazon's press release about this, and you mentioned it, Apple's curated playlists and radio stations, not your playlists. I don't know if that's an oversight in the press release or if it means that if you create a playlist, you can't access it through the voice. Yeah, it's. I, it, it would be strange to me if you wouldn't have that functionality. I love, I, I'm an Apple Music user and there are a few curated playlists um, that the, the the company does that I, I really love. So, it, it, you know, it's nice to have that as well. But if you put together your own playlist and you have access to all of your music and you can search by album or by artist, um, I'd be surprised if you wouldn't be able to access playlists as well, but who knows? Hmm. I, I also am curious if this is a skill, they're describing it as a skill, does that mean it's not integrated the way Spotify is? If I tell my Echo right now to play something, it will play it from my Spotify list. Uh, it'll actually play it from my leans because that's the one I hooked up to my account. But if if the Apple's a skill, I might have to say, tell Apple Music to play, which I'd actually like to have the opportunity to say, make this one my default if I don't say anything else, but give me the option to say, actually, I want this from Apple Music, play it over there. Especially if you use several music services, a lot of people just have one, but it, you know, mm -hmm. I, I have a Pandora account as well. And that's something that an echo also supports. You mentioned Spotify. So yeah, if you're, if you're wanting to be very specific about this is where I want this, this music or, or, or whatever audio played from, then, um, it might actually be a, a benefit. I mean, what I actually want is Google music to be integrated here, but a <laughs> hell will freeze over before that happens. <laughs> Maybe not, but it it will certainly come soon after. I mean, yeah. this also Amazon selling more uh, 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 Apple products on Amazon, like they've mm -hmm. added iPad Pros, most of the iPhones, the new Apple Watches. I just thought it was interesting for them. It's I I mean, it's it's not quite peace in our time, but it's certainly a lot more peaceful between Apple and Amazon than it has been for a long yeah. time. And I'm trying to decide if that's because they're working together to beat on Google? Question mark. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, those motivations are never as simple as that, but I'm sure they don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> never as simple as that. <laughs> uh, Starwood Hotels confirmed to U.S. regulators that someone gained unauthorized access to data from 500 million of its customers. The breach was detected on or before, <laughs> on or before September 10th in the filing, uh, but had been going on, they think, as early as 2014. So they didn't notice it. Uh, but it was detected on September 10th of this year. Marriott discovered someone had copied and encrypted data in an effort to remove it. They were they, they sort of like copy, encrypt, so you can't tell what I got, and then I'll move it off the server. The company decrypted that data on November 19th and determined, yes, it did come from the reservations database. It's not the entire database, but it is a large chunk of it, 500 million. 327 million of the records they found there included names, addresses, phone numbers, date of birth, gender, email addresses, passport number, Star Wars re rewards information, arrival and departure information, reservation dates, and communication preferences. This is oh, so a, nothing, nothing of interest. Well, a phishing scammer's gold mine, right? And yeah. an unknown number of the records included encrypted credit card information. Now it's encrypted, but the disturbing part is that Starwood can't rule out that the decryption key was also obtained. Usually they say it's encrypted, so it'll take them forever to break it. This time Starwood's like, 
We don't know. They might have gotten the encryption key and could decrypt your credit card information. Uh, of course, Starwood and Marriott, if you're like, wait, Starwood or Marriott, they're merged. Uh, Marriott acquired them last year. So this is one company, but two databases. Marriott's reservation database does not seem to have been affected by this. Hmm. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, right there. Right there. That is all the commentary you need on this, right? Well, it, it, okay, yes, it's it's there, there's more there's more to it than just a heavy sigh, but it's yeah, it's a like another day, another breach, right? But Starwood is like the biggest hotel chain in the world, um, with 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 many uh, hotels um, that are part of it. Even if Marriott is not, this is a huge, huge breach. Um, I know a lot of folks who actually are Starwood Points members, and. Um, you know, it's, it's, I actually talked to a friend of mine, uh, this morning who some of you may know, and he was like, I mean, how, you know, how freaked out should I be? And I was like, it's very hard to say it, yeah. it's, it's, you know, you, you know, your information might be, have been accessed, you know, including your passport number and just, you know, really yeah, personal stuff where, when you checked into a hotel and when you checked out and what you ordered and all that stuff. I would live my life these days as if all of this information was always possible to have been stolen. Right. Yeah. And so new breaches <laughs> don't freak me out yeah. they make me confirm my carefulness about like hey anybody at any point could have this information passport information is a new one but yeah <sighs> wow. I, I i don't know how useful the passport information is in 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 a lot of cases um you know i, I mean if this is I, I look at this and, and after i replaced you know i replaced my atm card three times and i think it was 15 months uh, because Target got hit, Home Depot got hit. Yeah, my credit card company keeps sending me new numbers regularly. Just yeah, because. yeah, you know, and and if you if you if you start paying attention when you're going around, very few small shops actually have uh, chip readers, right? So at this point, you know, the small shops don't want to upgrade to the chip readers. Uh, it's still in a lot of places, and. I just feel like, you know, we're 10 years behind Europe on security, security is slowly becoming better in credit card systems, and all these huge companies are still getting their asses handed to them by hackers. And I don't see that changing anytime soon. I've noticed a lot of the small companies, a lot of the small businesses have uh, tap to pay, though. Even if they haven't upgraded to a chip reader, they can right. take NFC, which may be a better, uh, a better way to go anyway. Just leapfrog past that chip reader anyway. Instagram announced a new stories feature for Android and iOS called Close Friends to share stories with just a select group of people rather than all of your followers. So Close Friends is a private list. So another user who's not on that list can't find it or see who's on it and get all weird about it. Now, if you're on someone's Close Friends list, you will know. You'll see a green badge when you view certain stories and you'll say, oh, okay, this is a private list rather than the story that everybody has seen. There's also a green ring around the user's profile in the stories tray. So the company's at least attempting to make it pretty obvious um, why this is happening. It's funny, a lot of um, a lot of uh, publications who who wrote this up this morning said, ah, oh, so this is like, you know, it's it's all the kids have Finstas, right? Which is like short for fake Instagrams because they want to have uh, a, a, an area of Instagram that's actually more private than their public Instagram so that they can be some other version of themselves with a with a smaller group of people. I can't imagine that Instagram is trying to get away with that because that would just mean it seems like there's more users using uh, the network. But I can see why when this would be um, uh, useful. You know, I mean, you had a new baby, or you know, it's you know, you got your 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 family on a list, or or you know, your 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 BFFs that you're on a group text with anyway. Um, I don't use Instagram stories with any regularity. I don't know if anyone else here does, but it's it's certainly a, a nice feature. I, I I can imagine that some some folks, if they want to get uh, granular with who they share things with, uh, will appreciate it. Yeah, and it's simple. Uh, it's 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 one list, close friends. You decide who to put on that list. You can put them on, take them off. They don't know, and you don't have to sit there and think. Now, which list did I create for which purpose? You've just got one <laughs> list. That's like here's my friends and family. This is where I put the baby pictures. This is where I put all the wedding plans, though, so I don't annoy everybody else. Uh, yeah, I think it makes perfect sense. And honestly, I don't think Instagram cares if people get rid of Finstas. Uh, companies have moved past just needing large numbers of users to to needing valid users. So this is this is part of the new movement to focus on quality interactions over just numbers. Mm -hmm. 
Intel announced it will start distributing universal Windows drivers, starting with a new set of graphics drivers. Microsoft requires this for Windows 10 October update and Windows Server 2019. Universal Windows drivers will let developers create one package that can run on multiple devices from embedded systems through laptops, tablets, desktop PCs, etc. Previous Intel drivers are now considered legacy. You can downgrade to them, but Intel says you shouldn't. And all future updates will be universal Windows drivers going forward. Patrick, is uh, is this a good thing or something rife with problems and you should stay on the legacy drivers for a while, do you think? Yes. <laughs> uh, I, I, I will tell you what, uh, watch Tech Thing next week because I'm in the process of trying to get the new Windows modern drivers onto one of my laptops just to see what happens. Um, it, it, so you might remember some security issues with Intel that happened and, and continued to on go, and there were some patches for that, and the patches maybe were a train wreck. Um, maybe not a train wreck, but but not everything everyone had hoped, and then all these vendors stopped offering the, the patches. I'm going to say let somebody else, you know, I, I will be the penguin to leap yeah. first. Let I someone like Patrick don't come back. Yeah. Assume there are polar bears and wait a while. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I, I think anytime... Anytime something this important, yeah, you know, because everybody with a laptop is that is not an AMD laptop is is ninety eight percent of you are running Intel onboard graphics on your laptop. So I'm really curious to see what they've done, and I'm really curious because I have not been able to find somebody to talk about why they did this moving forward. Because they do this because they want to fix things that exist and they want to be able to sort of move the platform forward. So I'm still digging into this. I will have more next week, uh, but right now I'm saying wait patiently. Let someone else, you know, uh, you know, make their monitor disappear before you do. <laughs> just yeah, unless, in case. unless you're that girl, right? Unless you're the one who yeah. loves to just get out there and, and try the stuff, then go for it. But yeah, if you're if you're worried at all, then pull yeah. off. Uh, I, I think this does have the potential to be really good uh, because it will simplify things. And simplifying anything, even a small right. amount of things in the driver's arena, uh, is worth the effort. If and, and, and the other thing is, is kind of like. Android getting security updates, ha ha. So many laptop vendors, especially as you get into to smaller laptop vendors, they don't really do a good job. Get, you know, Intel will force you to go to your laptop vendor to get an upgrade for your graphics, and those often never happen. Uh, and I would like to anything that streamlines the process of getting drivers directly to the end users. I, uh, especially, you know, not that I think there's a lot of security updates involved with this. Anything that gets, for, you know, updates to end users faster, I think is a positive thing for the most part. So. Netgear security camera Arlo, security camera company rather, Arlo announced its first 4K wireless security camera, the Arlo Ultra, with HDR recording and a built-in spotlight for color nighttime imaging. You'll have to have a subscription if you want to store security clips at the maximum resolution in the cloud, but there is a micro SD card slot available for local recording. The Arlo Ultra costs $399.99 and ships in the first quarter of 2019, and it also comes with a free one-year subscription to Arlo Smart Premiere. This but the the three stages of reaction I had to this story were ooh 4K camera then wait why do I care about a 4K camera and security then oh because of detail this is actually one of the situations where 4K makes sense it might even make more sense than having it on your television where without HDR you may not even notice that something's in 4K sure um, yeah it's like it's the fine print on someone's T-shirt as they rob you for example. <laughs> Or, or okay, but what about the uh, license plate number uh, on a car? No, yeah, I mean, I'm not kidding. I, yeah, I actually yeah. think more detail is better when you're talking about security cameras. Totally, totally. Yeah, I'm with you. Because so many security cameras give you this wondrous blur. It was yeah. definitely a human. Right, yeah. <laughs> I can't quite tell. Yeah. No, <laughs> this, is, this is better. And, and the Spotlight, uh, which I guess they sold separately before? Yeah, um, yeah. Last year's model um, had it um, selling separately. And then that would that gives you the the color nighttime imaging, which again, if you've ever used these at night, infrared is great because you can actually see in the dark, but you can't see well. So, uh, and and this is mostly meant for outdoor. Arlo Ultra is an outdoor uh, capable camera. You can use it indoor if you want. I like um, if they have a solar charger for it. Mm -hmm. Man, solar, you know, solar solar power for your house is one thing. Solar for lawn and outdoor security stuff is pretty great. Yeah. Like Christmas lights and pathway lights, says the new homeowner. 
Uh, it's kind of amazing what you can do without having to install a bunch of complicated electricity now. Yes. Well, do we think four hundred dollars is? Uh, I mean, it's it's not cheap. Um, I mean, mm -hmm. if, you, if you need the best security camera, this is certainly ranking up there. But um, it's it's not cheap. I think if you have an issue, that's probably worth it. Yeah. I don't know if you're like, mm, I live on a pretty safe and quiet street. Maybe you don't need this. Well, I live in a pretty until you do. Until yeah. you do. Yeah, no, 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 peace of mind. Mm -hmm. oh, what were you going to No, I was, I, it's been interesting because uh, we've had somebody uh, using the water in front of our house. And I don't particularly mind, say, the homeless guys that live down by the old railroad bridge using our water. Uh, you mean I like like it. the like the hose or? Yeah, the hose bib. And okay. I'm probably gonna I'm probably gonna have to put a, a you know security hose bib on there simply because they left it on one night. Mm. Uh, yeah, you know, and they left the hose cracked, and you know, I'm not right. entirely sure how much water ran out of it, but a lot more than I wanted next to the foundation of my yeah. house. And it's been interesting. Uh, there's a lot of uh, crime of opportunity stuff that goes on in our incredibly chill suburban uh, mm -hmm. uh, enclave, and they've they've stolen. Uh, you know, stuff out of our neighbor's driveway. They've come after stuff in our driveway. They took, uh, you know, I left out a, a, a device you use to uh, change brake fluid, you know, and they liberated that one night. And just like, oh, A, that was my fault for leaving it out. B, oh, it's good to know that people are looking for opportunities to steal. And C, let's, you know, do what I can to make my house yeah. less attractive as a place to rob. So. That, and, and that's something to consider with cameras because that's not a dangerous area. And cameras yep. may give people the idea that something really valuable is around. I mean, you well, get to see I mean, also, I had a neighbor uh, in a previous location that was freaked out at any particular sound, mm. which would be problematic when you get into some place uh, uh, rel rel relatively urban in North Jersey where we were living. And for them, like you know, <laughs> they died several years ago. But um, you know, to have for them to have had the ability to look at a camera in the backyard and see it's that delete expletive raccoon again mm -hmm. and, and not be <laughs> invading, you know, I th they were convinced that somebody was going to sneak in the back door and murder them in the night. And statistically, that's highly improbable. Especially uh, but you'd get a phone call and like you know, you go out with the flashlight and the raccoon would be like, you know, and then it would run off. Um, <laughs> I mean, don't mess with the raccoons, but they're probably not going to come in your house. I mean, where I live, we've got a gate and there's a code and, you know, everything is sort of behind the gate. Well, the other night it was raining and it was acting weird and I was in a hurry and I hopped the gate. It, yeah, yeah, You know, I can do it. I was, as soon as I did it, I was like, oh, thank God, thank God I'm inside. But hold on a second. My landlord should know how easy that was. Like, yeah. I'm like a tiny person. That was easy. <laughs> Well, but the, the thing is, I mean, one of the greatest conversations I ever listened to at DEF CON was a, a physical security expert talking to someone that was convinced that locks were the answer to make everything in their life safe so they would never have to worry again. Like, you could tell that there was some deep problematic issue that wasn't going to get. But but the, 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 the lock guy was like, yeah, you know, you're delaying people at best. Yeah, it's speed right. You're keeping honest people honest. But somebody, you know, but you look at statistics, most houses get broken into during the day while people are at work, they kick in the back door and they're out in, in minutes with a backpack full of small fensible items. Um, well, so. if you like small items, not necessarily small sensible items, but like short items, things that are about five minutes and keep you up to date on tech news, definitely check out our sister show, dailytechheadlines.com. All right, we had uh, Robert Herron on recently uh, talking about TVs as we head into the holiday season. So we asked Patrick to come on and talk about audio stuff. Uh, what are, oh what are some good audio things that either you love or you think other people would love? Everything. Buy everything. There is no bad <laughs> audio. Um, actually, there is, but that's another conversation. Uh, you know, one of my favorite things is give people a premium Spotify account or Title Hi Fi. Uh, I, I, you know, audiophile nerds are in love with Title Hi Fi, but quite frankly, I think Spotify has a vastly better interface and a, and a, and a, a somewhat less irritating interface. Um, you know, and but give them an opportunity to hear as much of the music as possible. Most of my audio collection has been ripped to FLAC files. And I can play them on portable audio players or on my phone. Um, but if you want to hear the best possible audio, get the best possible source. And that would be, I'd say, either like a premium Spotify account, a Tidal account, or ripping your own FLAX. Um, there's some more obscure options out there. I don't think anybody needs like high res audio. Can you buy um, a year in advance? That's always my thing with buying people subscription stuff is in a lot of cases, I want to say with Spotify, they, they tell you to get a gift card. Um, you know, there's, uh, I, 
I, I'm, I have not looked into title. The other thing is if you have kids or if you have family members, you can get a, a Spotify family account, um, which is a nice way to do it. Cause you can get yeah, yeah. You know, multiple users simultaneously for Bring them into the fold. Less. Yeah. Yeah. Than, than what about stuff they're going to play this, play this music on? Uh, you know, my favorite thing is if I, I get a lot of questions from people that are like, I, I want to upgrade my audio boy, the forums, because you know, people in audio forums are insane. Um, and I love the audio forums, but they're insane. Uh, and when you look at audio gear advertising and, and catalogs and stuff, a lot of it is bias conception. You know, if you buy these headphones, you're going to get more dates and life's going to be better because people will trust you. And this is a lie um, or a very rare sort of, you know, end user case. But like a set of Sony MDR 7506s, they sell for 75 bucks. Uh, that is a fantastic headphone like that in a Spotify account is mm. going to be a revelation for most people because those are uh, those are a nice set of headphones. They're impossible to kill. They sound excellent. Uh, you know, aesthetically, they may make you want to weep. That's a conversation. Uh, uh, I will I will you know, you these will not die. But I've seen these in audio recording studios. I've seen them used by professional video editors, people that can afford to spend a lot more on headphones. A lot of them use these because they're good and they're simple and they last forever. And, uh, you know, starting with, you know, you know, like a Spotify account, a set of these. And if you have questions about the quality of the audio uh, that's in or the audio sort of in your laptop or your phone, something like an AudioQuest Dragonfly, uh, which the basic black version sells for a hundred bucks. Um, you know, those three things put together, you know, good quality audio, a Sonos, you know, set of 7506s and a Dragonfly, that's going to give you a, a pretty amazing introduction to how good your music can sound without spending a huge amount of money. So, you know, when I do all my podcast uh, editing, I use exactly uh, these, these oh, Sony funny. headphones. <laughs> yeah, I, have like, I have like five of them. I just, but, but all the hosts like, put these on, you'll love it. Uh, but it's true. They're, they're the nicest headphones I, I've, I've used thus far. And they're not expensive. And no. I, I've, I mean, they're, I've not, a, they're not $10, but they're, they're, they are well within the reach of people who really care about listening to good audio. I, I will they last forever. They um, last forever. Yeah. I have yeah. a pair that I got from 2009 that I still use. I replaced the ear pads because the one thing I don't like about them is that the ear pads eventually disintegrate, but you can get pretty uh, effective replacements for like 12 bucks. Yeah. I, and I will say I, I've, I've used a lot of headphones. Eventually, the ear pads and everything will disintegrate. And that's something I worry about with certain headphones where they have really crazy, you know, where there's plastic injection molded snappy things on the back of them. I have deep concerns about whether or not I will be able to replace those uh, when they eventually wear out. Look, I believe yeah. Tom has a set. <laughs> These are, uh, you, you know, the, the headphones are, yeah. are definitely worn out, but they sound great. Uh, and if you put a little tape on the top that says do not take, then people don't take them. <laughs> Isn't that convenient? <laughs> yeah. I have a set of V6s, which are, are kind of a cousin to those headphones, which I think at this point are 23 years old. They're on their second set of headphones, headphones and I had to rewire them once because a friend of mine was gaming with them and did something. Uh, he flung them so hard, he managed to tear one of the cables out. Um, but other than that, man, they're bulletproof. And if 75 bucks is too much, there's a crazy set of headphones from Monoprice called the 8323. As near as anybody can tell, these were originally engineered by Kicker. The Kicker stopped selling them. Monoprice started selling them from the factory in China. We think that originally made them. These things sell for, I think, $22 from Monoprice or look at that, $17.24 on Amazon.com. They are disturbingly good for $17 because most most cheap earbuds and cheap uh, headphones sound awful. And those sound really, really good for the money. And if you've got a teenager who destroys stuff, just get them a set of those or, or better yet, make them buy a set of those. Um, should we talk more about headphones? You guys want to hear about speakers or? Well, give it, we, we're going to have to move along. So, so give okay. us give us one thing about speakers before we we head out. Uh, okay, uh, Elax Debut 2.0 or uh, the Unify UB5. Um, those are really fantastic speakers. Both of those, the the bookshelf speakers, those are selling for about 300 to 350 bucks right now. The Unify UB5 is like my personal favorite speaker. Uh, if I'm not gonna, if you don't have the money for like a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars for a set of Kef LS50s, which are also on sale for like a thousand, uh, the Unify UB5 is amazing. Uh, if you're looking for a really nice set of speakers for a full surround sound system, I'm really impressed with the Elac Debut 2.0 they engineered those with the uh, 
base port on the front uh and specifically so you could shove them really close against the wall without them sounding weird and i was shocked at how good they sound like that if you pull them away from the wall they get even better sounding and that's a really fantastic speaker for the money excellent uh we've got more links uh from from patrick's picks that we'll have in the show notes at dailytechnewsshow.com uh and of course uh, check out avxl.com or techthing.com for more of patrick's recommendations on all kinds of stuff Hey, thanks to everybody who participates in our subreddit every day. You're the best. You can yeah. submit stories and you can vote on other stories at dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com. You know who else is the best? Everyone on our Facebook group, facebook.com slash groups slash dailytechnewsshow. Let's check out the mailbag. Yeah, Stephen Schleicher from Major Spoilers weighed in on a recent discussion that we had about the need or do we need Wi-Fi hotspots? Steven says in his Kansas, most businesses like bars and restaurants and museums and parks and all that stuff have free Wi-Fi hotspots provided by one of the two ISPs in town. It's a town of 20,000 plus. We have two local ISPs that compete very heavily with one another. Next Tech is one of Next Tech is one of them. They, uh, their division of Rural Telephone, current listing of free Wi-Fi hotspots, can be found here. Stephen links us to the link, which we'll have on our show notes as well. Stephen says, "I haven't tested the current speeds lately, but I have been able to do more than just send and receive emails. My two boys have been able to stream YouTube and Netflix on their iPads from restaurants while waiting for food to arrive." Can imagine how nice that must be stupid yeah. eagle communications is the other isp in our town this is supposed to be a short email but let's just say a book could be written about these two companies and how they've tried to compete with each other over the years bottom line free hotspots do exist and are used heavily by our community even though lte services are available western kansas may be the exception to other communities rather than the norm though I love getting those feet on the ground reports like that uh, from Stephen, and I love this this sort of example of even in a town of twenty thousand, uh, if you have a little competition, if you got a couple ISPs, suddenly all kinds of crazy things happen, like free Wi Fi everywhere. You know, a park near me just put up a bunch of signs saying "free Wi Fi" sponsored by Toyota. Oh, <laughs> so I was like, oh okay. Well, they do those Toyota does those ads where they're like trying to do nice things for people. Maybe it's part of that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I don't really need it, but I'm like, I think probably some people would appreciate it. It's a pretty busy part. Uh, thanks to Patrick Norton for being with us on this wonderful Friday and giving us so many audio tips. Patrick, where can folks keep up with the rest of your work? Oh, goodness. Please head over to T-A-K-T-H-I-N-G.com, techthing.com or A-V-E-X-C-E-L.com, A-V-E-X-C-E-L. And uh, well, One's about tech, one's about audio and home video, and uh, I hope you'll join Robert and Shannon and I on both of those. Yeah, look at that. Uh, folks, if you are not a member of Patreon already, uh, you can get a little Shannon Morse in your life. She does some crossover stuff from Threatwire uh, in posts on the Patreon. Also, I have a feature called Editor's Desk available at the associate producer level and up where I go deep into why we do things the way we do. Uh, today, I did a recording of a Tech Dirt story about bias on Twitter and whether Twitter is susceptible to uh, losing its safe harbor privileges because of that. Mm -hmm. If you want to hear what I have to say on that, uh, if you're already an associate producer, check it out. It's at patreon.com slash DTNS or become a patron. And in fact, uh, we'll send you a holiday postcard to thank you. Uh, anybody who's a patron on December 5th, gets a postcard if they've given us their mailing address with a special message from the DTNS team and original art from Len Peralta. It's all part of us trying to get us over the hump. Uh, right now, we do have a few more patrons than last month, but keep us there. Get us as far over that line as possible at patreon.com slash DTNS. We love our hive mind and a good way to contribute is by giving us feedback. Feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com is our email address. We're also live Monday through Friday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 2130 UTC. Join us live if you can and find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. See you Monday. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. The Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this broker. <laughs> well, that, that frog pants stinger has a lot of bass when you have real headphones on. <laughs> True. Doodle -doo, doo doo doo. Yeah, I noticed you put the headphones on. Yeah, I can't. I don't well, know. you know, I was wearing I was wearing mine yesterday because I I I had kind of figured out a. a an amp situation that I wasn't mm -hmm. doing before, but they're, you know, it's a, it's a lot of headphone to wear. 
But um, the show sounded so good yesterday. <laughs> now where I'm back in my little in ear, I'm like, mm, you know, everybody's a little tinny. But you know, at least thing, you know, it looks looks cleaner on on. Video. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it also, to me, it's like, oh, the the people who are listening on lower quality gear, this is what this is this is what they'll hear. So I'm kind right. of monitoring that as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's a good point. Yeah, you know what's funny, Patrick. You you mentioned something about like you know aesthetically, you know you know whatever. But um, there there are lots of times where if I'm actually exercising and I'm going to be sweaty, I would never wear these because I don't want to ruin them. Right. But I I've, I I have kind of been you know maybe I've got a few podcasts lined up and I want to go on a real nice long walk and I just really want to mm -hmm. be immersed. I will wear these out in public, but I always feel slightly like. So Am I conscious. showing off? You know, do I seem like I'm, you know, going overboard where everybody else, you know, has their, you know, earbuds? I I, I, used, I think of a, there's this, I used to be on a train where there was a lot of kids from Brooklyn in New York City on a regular basis. And you could tell who were like the DJs and the music enthusiasts because of the headphones they wore. So right. I just think you look like somebody that actually likes to hear what the music sounds like. Totally. Um, and I mean, and if yeah. that's the case, then why would you care what anybody thinks, you know? <laughs> you're, you're but but I still I sometimes I still feel I'm like I'm wearing really big headphones right now. Studio uh, headphones. But they are nice. Yeah. And very comfortable. And really hard to kill, which I'm a big fan um, of. Yeah. Oh again, yeah. If they were know, killable, I would have. Audio you can't see, but look at that. Like yeah. <laughs> the foam is just degrading, but the headphones still work great. Yeah. No, they're they're amazing at how long they last. I mean yeah, like I have a little, like a. It's funny, like you can't see it, but there's a velour over the inside of this, and I've literally worn the velour off of the inside of these pads because um, I've worn these headphones so much. I also, um, because I have, I mentioned I, I use them for certain podcast productions, and it mm -hmm. means that somebody's going to wear a pair of headphones that somebody else wore before, and yeah. so you know, I'll do a little, I'll do a little handy wipe type thing, and that hasn't that hasn't been an issue at all. And I was kind of worried that it was going to ruin the material, but um, it hasn't. No, they're pretty, they're pretty indestructible and you can get yeah. replacement parts for, them. you can put replacement ear pads for them. Right. Yeah. I think Roger, you mentioned that. They, yeah. I got the ones that actually work with the, uh, the monoprice one you were talking about, which I'm wearing right now. So I bought two of the pads and they work great. They actually make those Sony headphones fit better because they wouldn't, instead of sitting on your ear, they sit because the pads are, chunkier they are your ears they, that big I, and i don't mean that in a mean way i just you know i, I thought mean, i knew you patrick i thought we were close but apparently not. i mean if well, patrick hasn't noticed question. your huge ears maybe I'm you guys producer, don't know patrick. each other at all. it's not like have, my ears are that small sarah <laughs> i i have i need to be able to listen her. to i have <laughs> the ears of a kit fox patrick <laughs> large and delicate the bigger the ear the more you know and that's how you become a good parent. You know, you can always, I, you know, you can always say, I heard you say something. Or, what are we you calling know, this episode? Oh, we're calling this Another Day, Another Breach. Or mm -hmm. the headphones are a lie. The headphones are a lie? Why what's is a, that? What's a lie what about it? it? <laughs> They're very much a reality. Yeah, I thought we had good headphones. <laughs> hey, then we can go with Patrick Norton says, listen up. Okay. <laughs> that works. I like that. Yeah. I had totally forgotten Garfield. I'm going to get a pair of Garfield softies and try them out on these Sennheisers. They're these, you, you'll either, you should click on the link I just sent out, Sarah. You'll is it like out. Garfield the cat or is it just No, this company's been around forever. They make, they're these weird rayon chenille uh, uh, covers that slip over uh, headphones. So it's named after the former president, Garfield. Possibly. One of the audio guys that, uh, at uh, that place. Well, where'd you, send, where'd you send the link? I don't know where that is. Oh, there's, chat. A, there's um, a chat in the, if you look at the chat. Oh, oh, oh gotcha. Okay. I was looking at Slack. Doodle -doo, doo -doo -doo. Well, one mm -hmm. of the audio guys that we used to work with at uh, Tech TV was a big fan of these. They always make me laugh because they look, they look like a 1970s couch cover. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you know they're good. <laughs> they must be good. They look like that. 
The sound is as smooth as a 70s couch. It really does look just like corduroy from my old, uh, not a couch, but it was like, um, Pants. it was a, it was like a, so, not a sofa seat, but it was like a seat that you, sofa seat that you kind of sat in, but it could swivel. Mm-hmm. I don't know what you call this. Couch. I'm not a furniture person, so I don't know the difference between a chase lounge and a couch and a sofa. Oh, yes, you do. A couch and a sofa are the same thing. A chaise is, well, it's behind me, although the rest of the couch had to be thrown out. But it's, it's that end where you can go. Sofa and couches t- aren't the same. Uh, well, some I mean, maybe they didn't used to be, but they for sure are. A couch and a sofa, it's just a couch. Didn't we talk about this recently, though? Like, what No, we talked about it last year. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about it as recently as last year. In fact, yeah. I'm telling you, they're the same. No, I know what you're saying, Sarah. The usage is the same now. Nobody, nobody makes a distinction. But I think we did talk about there's the, an amazing the, apartment. Why there, there were different, <laughs> why there were different terms. In the first place. Right. <laughs> well, it's sort of like family room and den. I mean, well, I don't den know. is not for the family. It's for what is it for? People. Well, it's usually for the guy and his buddies, right? Before it was a man cave, wasn't that the den or no? I don't think so. A yeah, den to a me den, was like den where was, you know the TV was and the no no den den to me growing up meant and we didn't have one but pe- people who had one that was where dad had his stuff. It was almost like a home office. His I den. just think of den with um, who was the father Mike Brady because he had his office was in the den, so that was that was. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Lion stays. I mean, I never had a den either, so maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Well, I didn't either. So I'm, I'm I do I'm, remember being a kid and people saying, like, oh, the family room. And I was like, the living room. And they were like, well, no, the family room. And I'm like, oh, the f- I mean, you, the family lives. Why well, can't the we living the room, room usually is near the front of the house because that's where you bring people, guests in. But the family room is further back where you keep the mess. <laughs> See, because I, I live in the house with both. <laughs> but I, I, yeah, I was going to say my grandparents, the my grandfather's den was called the nook and it was this sort of secret stair above the fireplace in the family room the family room was where everybody would hang out with the fireplace and the living room was with all the fancy furniture that i wasn't yeah, allowed to that's, that's what you would impress me ah right and there was also you, a like, formal have dining people room. over for tea but no one ever really uses it right. like the Duchess. My, my uh my dad always complained that we never lived in the living room <laughs> we well, here's a bottle of tequila and a hammer dad go for it <laughs> We 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 for sure did not have any furniture that would be appropriate for a room that I was not allowed to go in, even yeah, if we, we had an extra room, which we did not. We yeah. put the Christmas tree in the living room, and then we were allowed to hang out in the living room. And Christmas, uh, you know, when people came over for Christmas dinner, we would sit around the tree and exchange presents in the living room. That's that's what the living room is for. The rest of the year, ten months out of the year, that room was off limits. Uh, the only time I got to hang out is when I wanted to watch the St. Louis Blues because my dad hated hockey, so he'd make me go watch it on the TV in the living room. Really? Yeah. So if you weren't allowed in there ever, you know, you and your siblings, not were your with- parents yeah. using it a lot? No, nobody was. Yeah. So it was, was just it was just a dead room most of the it was, time. It was for entertaining too. only. So when people came home, when you came home, you walked right through it. It was also a mud room, which <laughs> kind of was not really. Yeah, and that's a, that's I know what a mudroom is, but I, yeah. you know, it's Stay, uh, foreign concept. I, I, I covet yeah. a mudroom. <laughs> I, I've been always. I I just take my shoes off at the front. It's, in, it's drilled into me. Yeah, well, take, well that, that's what the mudroom is is for. Is for taking off your shoes. But okay, here's my question, Roger. So let's say you have a pair of dress shoes, right? You're not wearing them all that often, but if they come out. They're not down there with all the other shoes, right? No. You take them out of the closet and bring them to yeah. the front and then put and them then on? put them on. Okay. Mm-hmm. You don't know what so, you stepped yeah. in. You might have been to, you You might have went to the most amazing wedding, but it could have been on a field with a lot of dogs that were there the previous day. You don't know what you stepped in. You don't want to through the house. As, it, as, as happens. Look at the bottom of your shoe. 
Well, some yeah, of it's funny you know because what? I'm I'm with you on that. I I don't want to wear shoes in the house. It, it's dirty. No, it's gross. But at the same time, you know how you have people come over and they say, "Should I take my shoes off?" Yeah. I always feel bad saying. No, I don't yeah. feel bad. There's a giant collection of shoes in the front that gives yeah. the hint, hint, hint. I, know, I should just get over it because I've had lots of people with shoes walk around on like a white shag carpet and maybe no, like. No, we even have a sign that says "Take your shoes off." I just put but it. you also told me when I came over, yeah, don't worry about that. No, because because we hadn't cleaned up yet. <laughs> so I'm like, <laughs> now, you, now you have to take it off. No, because at that point, we the house was new. And I was like, if I make you take your shoes off, you're going to be walking through dust and this dirt. Is, this is no. Tom's uh, roundabout way of telling me to wear socks. Just well, I, I didn't wouldn't even want your socks, socks on your filthy feet, Roger. Yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah. if you came over now, now that we've like tidied up and we've settled in, then I might. It would be. It would. Yeah. Right. We even Sorry. have a Roger has a hippie now and everything. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, sh I should hippie. just I should get over that and be like, actually, yeah, it would be cool. If I mean, I understand shoes. some people say that culturally, depending on how you were raised, taking off your shoes might be implying that you're gonna stay a while. Mm. And it's like, oh, no. I yeah. never heard that. Well, it was I don't know about that, but I remember the Kick when I spent time yeah, well. with some some Korean friends of ours in high school or in, in college, it was really weird to be asked to take your shoes off. And then it, it took me, it was, it was the first, but, 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 you know, I mean, where, where I grew up, nobody took their shoes off in any house, like ever. Yeah, no, it's the same. Weird. We never did either. Oh, that's funny. Um, See, uh, where I grew up, my grandparents on my mother's side, it was a take your shoes off house, right? That was a thing like, oh, we're in grandparents. I'm going to take our shoes off. My mom wanted to do that at our house. And my dad was like, that's ridiculous. I'm not making people take their shoes off just you know, walk in our house. There's also, and this is actually literally a Sex in the City episode, but there's also, and I've been through this before. Let's say you go to a holiday party, right? We're coming up on the holidays. So sometimes people have, you know, little cocktail parties and stuff. Then you got an outfit and you got real cute shoes. Mm. And then when you have to take your shoes off, you're like, oh, it's the whole thing's ruined. I wouldn't have even worn all of this. The shoes make the outfit. Now I'm not even going to wear them. And I'm you sure know, if, standard, right? You so know what? You know if they moved that. shoes and moved away from shoelaces to just those Velcro straps that you had. Or yeah. I had oh, like nurse's shoes. Yeah. It's just, you know, then then people wouldn't feel so bad because it'd be easy to take Or out. orthopedic shoes. It'd be great. No, it's not about the laces. It's about the cute shoe. Well, heel. It, it, well, and it's also about expectation of like, oh, I didn't think yeah. I'd have to take these off at the other end of the. Well, totally. It's a, yeah, it's a Christmas right. party. And that doesn't happen that often, but it has happened where I'm like, mm -hmm. man, no, I, just, no. I have a hangnail. And I don't LA or back in San Francisco? I, I don't know. The I mean, of being certainly asked to back in San Francisco. Fancy shoes in LA just like, they just. Well, no. Know. Okay. So it's not even about the fancy shoe. Like, think of it this way. So if I'm wearing pants where. They're a little too long, yeah. but I'm wearing heels. So I kind of, you know, I've yeah. sort of elongated myself and the whole thing works as a package. Yeah. Take the shoes off and then I've got these like, you know, you, you pants may find it shocking, like but I at one, the bottom and I look weird. I was stylish at one point in my life and I understand <laughs> everything working together to make a complete look. I get that. I actually was that person several decades ago i'm just saying like um it just it just to be asked to remove your shoes at a holiday party it just really i'm just really really well if it's in um, someone's house where that's what you a, do who cares if it's a party, party that's just the way it goes freaking vacuum and clean after everyone's gone after all the just, uh, there's so left. much more because you you can't right. vacuum away all the stuff you got to go through it with a with a carpet cleaner which is why i own one yeah, you just <laughs> I mean I get being asked to remove high heels on the deck of a boat. That I completely understand. Um I yeah, think uh, I think some some yeah, houses are just strict overboard no shoe policy. And and from and yeah. Why Whether do you wear your party or people coming over for the Super Bowl, the shoes come off, which is fine. I've just been disappointed in the past a few times where I'm like, hmm. Yeah, wish I would have known this. I just would have worn something different. It's, it's I wish I would have known this, right? There, if yeah. if the expectation is always the same, then you won't have to worry about it. But it's now it's like become a research issue of like, wait, which person am I going to? Which <laughs> I <laughs> should <laughs> I'm my shoes off, so I wear socks without holes. <laughs> I I too wear socks without holes. Well, I no, I, I keep some of my holy possible. socks because but, I'm too lazy to. I don't want to wear socks with holes in them. But I I will yeah. wear them if I need to go out to the supermarket and grab like groceries. No, you will no. wear socks with holes. Darn your socks! 
Roger, just get your socks. socks. I do. They're in a and they're in a package, and I don't want to open it because it's pristine. Ah, yeah, right. I will. Yes. The older you get, Roger, the more like my grandmother you get. (laughs) Like she wore holy socks. She wouldn't like. I don't want to open the pack. They're pristine. Star Wars figurines. Roger keeps his socks at a bookcase on the wall. Still in the original wrapping. Here, here, I'll, I'll bring. I'll, I'll show. These socks are mint. You know how much value they lose. Don't you take touch your those socks. socks. Well, they'll they'll, much, they'll lose their the resale out. value. My mom. My mom was just shaking her head because she found like five pairs of shoes unworn, still in the box. So I still have these. I have yet to. I bought I these what early are they? last year, and I've yet okay. to open them. What are you Come showing? On, open them. My open socks. Them. Open them I for the patrons. Roger. <laughs> Ooh, that could be a patron tier. Also, uh, where, are, where are your socks? Yes, please. <laughs> well, That's back so wait, I'm, supposed to wear, I'm supposed to wear these all. What's wrong with my socks? At least open them. My goodness. It's a waste of money. Use the socks, Roger. I, I it's know not a waste what, of I, money I if I still have them. I with this, though, because it's like... Wasting the money. Not, I can't think of anything in like a socks and packages that I'm not opening, but it. I do weird things, too, where it's like... I have like one dish in the dishwasher and like lots of clean dishes in the cabinet. And I'm like, yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to fuss with the dishes in the cabinet. I'll just take the one out of the dishwasher and wash it real quick and then use it. Oh, that's me. And that's, that's totally like, that it doesn't make sense, but it's just a weird thing that we do sometimes. Yeah. In other words, the effort of putting that dish up and Oops, we stop the video right now and we say goodbye to the video folks, but we, <laughs> we got more weird things to talk. So don't <laughs> weird things coming up. 